Yo, what's up people, my name is Tanachi and I'm back here in the Water Satisfactory. Alrighty, hope you're keeping well. Okay, so I'm going to be going over an old idea here and I've kind of expanded on it and changed it a little bit too. I give it a different function, different use. Okay, so I've done a quick test bench here and um, it's loosely based on an idea I did some time ago. Uh, looking at a, a way to control the flow of belts remotely through the use of one programmable splitter. If you like this idea, and you would want to know more, check out this video and this will explain the setup that I've got going on here and we'll go into the details of how to build it and set it up. It might not make sense if you haven't seen that video. And I'm still kind of thinking how this could be useful but anyway let's get into the well some of the specifics. So in this container we've got a lot of plastic and in this container we've got a lot of uh, concrete and in the last one I'm using as my blocking pinning item. I've got loads of solid biofuel so what's happening with this one is all the biofuel is just going around in a loop coming out here and going back. So it's just one loop of solid biofuel. So the solid biofuel comes to here, overflow straight, biofuel to turn right. At this splitter, the biofuel to turn left and overflow straight, and it will pass through this merger. And any items coming onto this merger will interrupt the biofuel that's trying to go this way. And as you can see, it will overflow down uh, below there. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Otherwise, the biofuel will just continue going straight and then the biofuel will turn back left here and join this merger and then carry on the cycle. So essentially what this is doing is the concrete that's coming from the train there comes into this container, joins this merger and every time one concrete goes into the merger, uh, one solid biofuel will come down here. But as I said, if this doesn't make sense, just check out the other video and I kind of got over all of this in a, in a bit more detail. And the biofuel together with the concrete goes onto this merger and the biofuel is set to go left and concrete straight but because uh, there's so much biofuel coming onto this merger and the biofuel can only escape this way and I've got it going round in loops so the biofuel go into there and again with a mark one belt in between there and here it's important as well so the biofuel just keep going round in loop but on this splitter we've got uh, half of the biofuel go left and half of the biofuel go right and the biofuel that goes right will uh, come back and join the uh, belt of biofuel at the beginning. I'm just going to go over it very quickly here I and mean, if you do like it though uh, check the video that I posted which will go over it in a lot more detail. But in a nutshell what's happening is the concrete here is uh, overflowing biofuel to block the concrete going forward but because we've got some biofuel escaping at 30 per minute which would allow in consequence 30 concrete to go forward but what I've done here on this splitter I've set concrete to go right and overflow straight with a mark one conveyor and a mark one belt so all of the 30 concrete will get picked up here and back onto this uh, freight platform that's there I've got exactly the same thing happening with the plastic here and what does this do so this is giving us 30 concrete and 30 plastic going onto this freight platform and I've got a temporary setup here with a train just going backwards and forwards between these two train stations so these are the pinning blocking items I'll call them the the blocking items so you know what I'm talking about so the blocking items go onto this platform and the train will then take them onto this platform at this train station and all of them are coming straight out and going onto this platform and why am I doing that so all of these items those blocking pinning items are now here now let's say this uh, train station is far far away at a new location that I'm starting a new build at. As I mentioned I've only set this up for two items. Pretend I've set this up for uh, kind of all the basic items you need to start a new factory like the building materials and I'm far away at this train station and I want some more concrete. What I would do if I take this stack of concrete and this, these two stacks will constantly uh, be picked up by this train. So this train is going to pick up the um, the blocking items that were delivered last time. So that's the blocking items that were picked up now. Dropped off at this uh, freight platform, which are then, which are coming straight out onto this uh, freight platform and being picked up again by the uh, train. And then that train will come back and drop off those uh, blocking items at this platform. So basically it's just ro rotating picking up and dropping off the same blocking items every single time. And if we don't do anything with these uh, plastic and concrete that are now at this station, those blocking items will again be dropped off at this uh, freight platform which will bring the blocking items onto these two containers to continue doing that blocking process so that the main flow of concrete here and the main flow of plastic here as you can see. I've got them merging here and you can see there's no uh, plastic and concrete going onto the last platform because um, as you can see the uh, the concrete and plastic keeps coming back being picked up and dropped off by the train and continuing on that blocking process. The way I've set it up here the kind of idea I've had is that this could be used as a remotely accessible storage and quite a relatively simple setup. I mean end of the day any kind of remotely accessible storage is going to have to have some 
fairly significant setup. It's not going to be uh, just one or two splitters. Uh, but anyway, let's pretend I want some concrete. So I'll take the concrete. And now the next time this train comes back to this uh, train station, it obviously won't be picking up any concrete because I've taken it. But let's pretend I'm, I'm building some concrete foundations over here and I need some more. So when the train comes now, it's only going to pick up the plastic. But as we took all the concrete from that uh, freight platform that's over there we're not going to get any delivery now of concrete so once this concrete runs out which was from the last delivery this system will start clearing out the train is nearly finished unloading as you can see here this uh, container is now empty of, of concrete they're both running dry both the, the concrete and the plastic container from the last delivery have run dry as you can see here the biofuel is nearly emptied out this should be full of biofuel. And so if we don't get a, a fresh new delivery, which you can see I took the concrete, so we only got plastic this time. This system will start uh, emptying out of solid biofuel, this little circular system. And now that the concrete is starting to pick up speed and because this splitter can only pick up as I've got a Mark 1 built here, it can only pick up 60. So the rest of the overflow of the, uh, the concrete is now moving forward and coming onto this uh, freight platform. Uh, the next time this train goes back to this platform, it's gonna pick up a large delivery, as you can see, of concrete. So what we're doing basically is we're kind of ordering concrete at our remote location, wherever this might be. And obviously this train platform will be far away. Um, but as I didn't pick up the concrete from this container last time, it's going to drop off some more concrete the blocking concrete items as you can see we've got plastic but any second we've got concrete so this time around that concrete is going to block concrete by overflowing the so the bar fuel just the usual pattern basically uh, so eventually this concrete is going to stop it's going to take a couple of turns for it to stop flowing but that doesn't matter because we want a nice uh, flow of concrete to be delivered to us at this uh, station i can even take both items so this time if i take both concrete and plastic from the blocking platform that's in the middle here the next time round it will start bringing in both plastic and concrete we're going to get a delivery of concrete slowly slowing down over the next three to four deliveries of this train so overall taking one stack of blocking items from here will give us roughly approximately three to four deliveries of concrete slowly diminishing every time as I mentioned this time I took both the concrete and the plastic so you can see uh, it's not delivering any concrete or plastic this time so we're not going to get any delivery of any pinning blocking item so now this time you're going to see both the plastic and the concrete will start increasing in speed. And if we watch here, uh, slowly, slowly, we should start getting a lot more plastic and concrete coming through. So now as you can see, we've ordered ourselves um, some concrete and plastic. And after about three or four deliveries, uh, if we don't continue taking out concrete and plastic from this middle container, uh, eventually the concrete and plastic will block, which is good because we don't want it to keep coming through and flooding the station with an excess amount of concrete and all plastic. So what this is doing is kind of giving us a remotely accessible storage from our storage, which is set up over here. And as I mentioned, we've only got two items here. And uh, with this system, you can only do uh, 13 items because um, if you're using Mark 5 belts, they can have um, 780 items and if we're overflowing at, at max capacity 60 items per minute mark 5 belt divided by 60 will give us 13. There are ways around that though but I don't want this to get too complicated uh, so just keeping it as it is this will allow you to have up to a maximum of 13 different items at your central storage and we have ourselves a nice remotely accessible storage and it's quite simple to be honest considering how much it's doing in the very small system there it's not too complicated and so the only addition really is from the other video instead of these two uh, mark one belt which before in the other video I had going to a programmable splitter so I could remotely control the flow of belts but instead of those pinning blocking items going to the splitter I've now got them going onto a train station keep it in mind if you were to do this with um, uh, trucks or drones you would need free drones or free truck stations so probably much better to do with uh, trains because it's a lot easier to set up one train with three platforms than it is to do free trucks or free uh, drones at each location both at the receiving and also the delivering side of course a bit, a bit of pain in the ass I think but okay that's one implementation of this idea but how else could it be useful so what I was thinking and what I was kind of initially playing around with this idea with now these pinning and blocking items if we consider this the kind of net stack command, so we're sending these blocking items onto a remote factory uh, to check which ports are open at that remote factory. And what I mean by ports, obviously, is 
which machines are running. Any of the machines that we've got running, if they're turned on or if they're demanding items, uh, the pinning blocking items that have been delivered here won't be returned because they'll be used by the machines. And so the system won't get a delivery of those pinning items on the next turn round. Uh, that would in turn, of course, open the floodgates to allow both the uh, concrete and plastic to come through to these platforms. And it would all be done automatically. If you can kind of picture this being attached to a configurable factory, whichever machines now use these items, it has the same effect. And this doesn't need to be set up using train stations. So we can, of course, just have those pinning blocking items going straight into a factory that's local to give us the same effect. So the pinning items could go into the factory and scan the whole factory. You could have it circling and have it like a predefined route going through all the machines. And then any of those machines that call off or use those pinning blocking items, pinning items won't be returned because they're being used, which will of course give us the same effect and open the floodgates of your storage system that it's attached to, to send more of that particular resource. And you can have that resource coming on a different belt so you can isolate the belts of the pinning items and also the, um, the actual main feed that you want to come from your storage when I mean, you'll have to have them merging at some point to go into the machines but up to the point of the machines you could have the um that's not going to make any sense is it anyway i mean the point is that there's a lot you can do with this you just got to kind of like uh, play around with it and mess around and customize it to your own needs and this is actually the third remotely accessible storage idea i've had and out of the three i think it's actually the best one and it gives you a real nice throughput of the items you need so um, just by taking one or both of these items so if i just took this stack of concrete i'll fast forward it now and we'll see how much uh, concrete that will deliver me over the next uh, three or four turns And this is just starting off on the, I think, was it the second? Was that the first or the second? Can't remember now, what donut, anyway. As you can see here, we've got a nice amount of concrete still going forward. And now the train's making second delivery and we still got a nice um, amount of concrete still coming through to be picked up the next time round. The, the concrete should slowly now start getting a little bit slower because on the last delivery it would have brought back concrete on the on the pinning blocking freight platform as you can see the concrete is slowing down but the concrete will still trickle through for the next three four five deliveries As you can see the concrete is starting to pick up again but it will get blocked and slow down again and by roughly the fourth or fifth return of the train uh, the the concrete will completely stop but as i said we want this to happen because it will give us a nice delivery of concrete just by taking out a very small stack from the freight platform over there so i won't wait anymore and i'll see how much is delivered so far just by taking out one stack as you can see we've got over a thousand and if I check here now, we've got another 156 still to come. So as you can imagine, every time you take out one stack of concrete here, you're gonna get over a thousand every time, which is a nice return. But that's basically the idea. And I'll very briefly go over now, just in case you are interested, some important parts to keep in mind. First and foremost, check out the other video on how to set this up initially. So for every item that you set this up on, uh, you'll need to have a, make sure that there's a Mark II belt going in between. Uh, all of these uh, splitters and mergers at the top here. It doesn't matter what you use at the end there actually, but just to keep it simple, let's say we have a Mark II belt uh, running through all of these uh, splitters and mergers here. And you'll need to make sure there's a Mark I belt in between there, which is it stays the same actually as the last time. And again, same as last time, to have a Mark I belt uh, coming off here. And another important note as well, when the train picks up, the items stop flowing in and out of the train station. So that is a bit of an issue, but we can easily overcome that by having the, the buffer there as well. And what that does, it just makes sure that we have the full amount of blocking pinning items going into the uh, the train station. Because if you don't have that uh, buffer there, what will happen is um, these pinning items might backlog a bit and then you might not get enough pinning blocking items going through to the platform. So the next time round, when they get re-delivered again, if they're not used you might have a little bit less pinning items than you need easily overcome just by adding a container to have as a buffer going into the uh, train station also here is where you can see i've added um, 
uh, two containers, one for each item. They have a buffer also for the returning blocking pinning items. As you can see, as they come off the train, they go into a buffer because you want that flow to come up really quickly because you're only sending the exact amount of pinning items every every journey backwards and forwards. And if you don't have these containers here, only one item will be able to come through at once. So that's plastic will come through to that splitter. And if you didn't have that there, the you need to have a, one, a Mark 1 belt here going into this uh, uh, merger. So until the plastic clears, the concrete will be stuck waiting to get to this splitter to go into the next one. As you can imagine, if you had this set up for up to 13 items, as I mentioned, and the train station was far, far away, you're going to have probably close to a thousand pinning items come through, maybe more, I'm not sure. You want to get those pinning items off the train as quick as possible, and you might even need to use both of the outputs here as well, and then send maybe half one to one half of your pinning blocking storage items, and then use the output of the other, the second output of the train station to go into the second half of pinning blocking items if that kind of makes sense i think that's pretty much all of the um yeah i think that's it other than that all the other belts can be marked three four or five and yeah all right yes yes all right so you might be thinking archie why are you doing all this complicated nonsense it's just so unnecessary and you know what you're right it is unnecessary so if you're looking at this and thinking oh, i don't know if i can bother to do all that it looks too complicated you don't need to do this none of this is necessary at all you might be thinking i just want to make some bloody screws also with blocking nonsense yes yes this is just like me messing around with some late game stuff as i've unlocked everything a long time ago i've been playing a long time and just don't experimenting with alternative ideas as I've shared ideas like this before on some of my earlier videos and people have come back to me and massively improved on ideas that I've shared and to be honest I, I quite enjoy when someone takes my ideas and massively improves them and does things that and I'm thinking wow that's really impressive like for example I think a guy called Rowan he did a remotely controllable configurable factory absolutely brilliant and he was using both the pinning and blocking and also the sequence uh, system. And I'll put a link in the description as well so you can check him out on Reddit if you if you wanna know more. But he contacted me, he was like, yes, yes, Archie, you're a moron. I've massively improved in your idea, check this out. And I'm like, yes, yeah, well, hold on. And he's like, yes, yes, you're a moron. And I'm like, yes, yeah, well, what, what, what? I'm only really joking, everyone's really friendly. And also another guy called Mark Waterlet, who's done a really impressive uh, storage distribution kind of system. I'll let him explain it on his own. A reddit post and i'll put a link to that as well but those are for example a couple ideas or a couple people who have taken some ideas and massively improved them and done some really impressive builds based on them are they necessary of course not but some of us really enjoy this kind of stuff so that's why i'm kind of sharing these alternative uh, kind of ideas okay so coming to the end of the video uh, but before I end, on the last uh, build that I shared a video on, I did this build here called Petra. And what I liked about this build is that it's really discreet from the, from the outside. From the outside you can barely see anything that's going on. You can just get a glimpse there actually in the background at the top there of the, the Dwarven statue. Actually talking about dwarves, why is it that nearly every time a dwarf is played in a movie, they nearly always use someone who's got a Scottish accent. I mean, I kind of get it. That's kind of suit, I guess. Oh, I don't know if I was Scottish, I'd, uh, I might have a saint to say about that. Uh, but anyway, enough of that. Coming on to here, I've done another build. I've pretty much finished it, to be honest. Most of it's done. Um, so I'll show it in the next video, though. This one's going to drag on too long otherwise. So I've got another factory just beyond uh, where that train is coming and just beyond those pillars there, where, which is uh, producing the quick wire silica copper sheets and. Um, something else I think, can't remember, what this train is delivering. And in there I'm producing supercomputers and all the requirements for supercomputers. So computers, high-speed connectors, bit of plastic, AI limiters and circuit boards, all being done in there. But it's only 20 machines. A lot of them are heavily overclocked so I could keep it uh, quite small. But because I like the very discreet kind of look over here with this Petra build, I wanted to try and keep to that. It's a very different style of build, a different kind of theme, very modern and high-tech. But I've tried to keep it quite minimal and uh, fairly discreet as well but i'll share that in the next video and also uh, the factory that i've done over there that's supplying uh, this one as well all right anyway i think i'm going to call it there guys thank you for watching i hope you've enjoyed and uh, maybe i'll catch you again soon